Hey guys, how's it going? Um, I'm here to record my new little series. That uh, this mod was recommended by a friend. It's called uh, Stanley's Parable. Um, he recommended it to me in college. Said he's seen a few videos of it. And it looks really good for like just a short, like I don't know, series of videos maybe. So thought I'd give it a try. Not really sure what to expect. He told me not to be worried because it's not like a horror game or anything. But he said it's very interesting. So, thought I'd give it a go, see what it's like. <clears throat> I don't want to skip. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Hmm. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Oh. Orders came to him through a monitor next to his desk telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. That's not interesting. And although others might have considered it soul-rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, oh, as though he had been made exactly for this couldn't. job. And Stanley was happy. Oh. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Uh -oh. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on a monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and walked out into the hallway. Okay. So, apparently... Let me just get rid of the captions. Apparently, um, basically, it is a story about Stanley. The narrator talks through it all, and I can choose to listen to him, or not. Uh, I prob there's six endings. I'm not sure how to get them all. Stanley decided to go to the staff lounge hell. to check on his co-workers. So I think for the he first one... He functioned well by himself, and constantly needed support and guidance from others. So the thought of total solitude was terrifying to him. I think for the first ending, I will follow what the guy says. Get a feel. When Ooh. Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yes, sir. Just this time. <laughs> My mail. Oh. Just following the path. Ah. As Stanley entered the lounge, he was horrified to find not a Good single morning. person there. He decided he would walk up to see his boss, hoping that he would find an answer there. It's a bit creepy that the doors are open on their own. Hello! Okay, they're gone. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. If you say so. Entering his manager's office, Stanley okay. was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. It was at this point ah. that he began to feel dizzy and a little sick, and even thought he might pass out when suddenly he noticed a keypad Beat next to the it. filing cabinet in the corner of his boss's office. Stanley had never seen this panel before and had no idea what combination of numbers would produce any result. In fact, only Stanley's boss knew this, since the panel withheld access to the boss's greatest, darkest secret. And so he Ooh. had assigned the keypad a combination that only he could possibly know. The number of his freshman dorm number in college. One, nine, five, seven. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Yet incredibly, <laughs> by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. That's brilliant. Amazing. That is Stanley amazing. Stanley ventured forth into the newly opened passageway. I'd like to point out, if the resolution looks weird... he drew weird, deeper into shocking. the bowels of the building, Stanley had no idea where he was or what this place held. 
And just as he began to think he might not discover a thing, he emerged into a long room to find rows and rows of monitors. That's me. Screens with a number above it. Stanley noticed, however, that these were not random numbers, but the number of employees who worked in the building, his co-workers. Even his own number, 427, Told had it. a place on the wall. But why a setup so elaborate, he asked. Was this simple surveillance or something even more? And as if in answer to his question, the wall slid open before him, revealing the ultimate truth of the situation. The wall's not sliding open. Am I missing something? No. Is this meant to slide open? Oh. Ignore that. An enormous control panel Stanley discovered, but not one that controlled simple machinery. Hmm. Buttons were labelled with emotions. Happy. Sad. Levers and knobs controlled actions. Walking, eating, doing work, or watching TV. Every input on this device monitored not the functions of a machine, but of a human being. And the reality began to sink in. Stanley, like so many other people, reduced to images on a monitor, had been under someone's control. Bastards. Always at the mercy of this machine. Could this have been the only reason employee number 427 was content with his boring job? That a machine had altered his emotions to accept it blindly? He began to feel an unbridled rage, and at the peak of his anger, something happened. A spark. Holy! Stanley oh looked up and saw the generator fuck. overhead, still providing some uh. small amount of power to the machine. Keeping it alive. Get the shit and knowing that this generator was all that kept the controls running, Stanley moved to the ladder in the back of the room Larry and began to dick. climb towards the rafters. Where's that thing going? That's just gone into. Oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah, as I was saying, if the resolution looks bad, they don't have full HD on this, so. I'm sorry, it's not my choice. How to clock there we go. The higher Stanley climbed, the closer he felt to freedom. The ah. further from enslavement. I hate this guy, he's a dick. He's scaring the shit out of me. Ah, Facebook. I'm sorry. My bad. Hmm. Pretty colours. I'm assuming that's what I wanted to do. I wasn't really paying attention. Oh. Blackness. Power gone. All alone. I'm so terrified now. And then? Please, please, no. No. Please. Oh, thank Christ. <laughs> As he stepped through the door into the fresh outside air, a feeling of liberation rushed through Stanley's body. He had seen power. He had seen enslavement, and he had destroyed it. The underling was in control now. He had found his leading role. Stanley never discovered why everyone had gone missing, nor how and when he had come under the machine's control. But it didn't upset him terribly, because he knew that this was how things were meant to happen. All he felt was a delight unlike any he had ever known before. Never again would he follow someone else's orders without question. Never again would anyone tell Stanley where to go, what to do, or how to feel. No more bosses. No more instructions on a screen. Stanley decides for himself now. And he stepped out into the world. And he felt the cool breeze upon his skin. And Stanley was happy. Ah. Ah. So I, I get it now, it's just like a decision thing. It's not the most action-packed thing, but it's kind of interesting. Especially seeing as there's like so many different decisions to make. So, I think I might... Um, this might be a one-part uh, episode, I might try and put a second ending in. I'll do another ending now, see how 
how long that takes, how big the recording would be. If this has come out as one part, then expect the second part soon. If it's two parts, then I don't know when the third one's going to be out. So let's see how it goes. And we're back. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company you know in a big anyway, building. So let's skip that. What a lovely gentleman. Mm, tune. Da, na, 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 na. No, 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 I'm stalling. Stanley decided to go to the staff lounge to check on his co-workers. He never functioned well by himself and constantly needed support and guidance from others. So the thought of total solitude was terrifying to him. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Unlikely. This was not the correct way to the employee lounge, right, so. and Stanley knew it perfectly well. So he turned left at the first open door and walked back in the right direction. Hell to the no. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Oh, wow. Maybe this is why everyone had left. No one wanted to be around someone as bad at listening as him. And since he was walking into the middle of nowhere and thus ruining the entire story, <laughs> Stanley decided that he would punish himself. So when he came to the elevator and the doors opened, he stepped inside and pushed the button to go up. <laughs> this guy's an asshole. Down. Oh, Stanley. Oh, Stanley. <sighs> you know... You really aren't going anywhere, and I don't say that deceitfully. I truthfully mean that there isn't a story down here. The story was back up where I told you to go in the first place. Right now, you're just running around looking at empty halls. And frankly, that's perhaps even more infuriating for me. So why don't you throw me a bone, give me a chance, and just let me tell the story I want to tell? Fuck hmm? you, you said I'm incompetent. I can do what I want. Don't have to listen to no silly narrator. Now listen carefully. This is important. Stanley walked through the red door. Did he fuck? Aha. Uh, uh -huh. Perhaps you misunderstood. No. Stanley walked I through the clearly. red door. Fuck you. I still don't think we're communicating properly. Stanley walked through the red door. Really? Do I have to? Ah! All right, fine. Go ahead, Stanley. You want to know so badly what's out there? You want to find out what lies at the end of this road you've chosen? Well, don't let me stop you. You see? It's nothing. No one's even built this section of the map because you were never supposed to be here in the first place. I love it here. It's just a bunch of skybox and dev wall textures. This is That's brilliant. It. Is this what you were looking for? Yes. Was it worth ruining the story I'd written out for you? Yes. I put a lot of time into that. And now you I don't give Well, a here shit. you are now, just looking at nothing. I know. To it's think better that that's than that. all I needed to make in the first place, just a whole I didn't lot of nothing. Even and want you would happy. Well, hey, you still need a little something to do. Am I, I right? Do I. Here, let me load up another map. No, just See leave, if there's something in here that'll me. keep you occupied. Leave me here, I'm happy. Ah, here's one. Let's boot this up. We'll see if you like it. What the f It changed the map for me. Well, Stanny, is this any better? I don't know why it would be. This map wasn't even made for you. What am I doing in Half-Life? I created a world specifically with you in mind. I wanted to make you a leading man. You, this one, well, I'm afraid you're on your own there. What the hell? How did... What? What an asshole! I was happy there! I don't understand why he sent me to this fucking... Half-Life map. Stanley was fat and ugly and really, really stupid. Oh, wow. He probably only got his job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. That, or with drug money. I hope this guy also, dies. Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. 
Well, I can't argue with that, but still. Sending me a city 17. I spent so long talking about you, why don't we just take a break from that and talk about something else for a change? Because this room has Let's a bloodstain. Well, according to Wikipedia, more than 90% of the night sharks caught off northeastern Brazil contain mercury concentrations higher than that considered safe by the local government. Oh now, this God. is fascinating. Don't you want to know more about the night sharks? What the fuck am oh, I going to no, do with information not. about the night All you shark. want to hear about is yourself, isn't it? Well, fine. You haven't listened to me once so far. I can't expect you to turn that around now, can I? I don't even understand anymore. Ow! <sighs> Is this the end of the line? I don't suppose this was a particularly fulfilling experience for you, considering not a single art aspect in this map was created with you in mind. But hey, you're a creative kid. I bet you can come up with a story about this place and why you're in it. And while you're doing that, I'm here because why I'm don't a you hero. think up an ending too? Because you certainly won't find one here. Watch me. I'm afraid that's the long and short of it. Oh my God. This room and shut these up, walls are up, all shut you up, get. Shut up. Maybe the story ends when you decide you can't live in this futuristic science fiction dystopia world, and you gallantly commit suicide. Wow. Or maybe you stand in this spot for all of eternity to guide and greet other travelers like yourself who pass this way. Or Ooh. maybe you just get bored and Someone's you quit the game. Team Fortress. Heck. Anything's an ending if that's where you stop playing. But whatever ending you write for yourself, Stanley, you won't have my help. You turned your back on me, and now I do okay. the same to you. So, I'm scared to good go luck. There. I think you'll need it. And I sincerely hope that oh everyone God. lives happily ever after. I don't want to try jumping down there until he shuts up. Oh, he's gone now. Um. Wait. Ow. Hold on, what are you, what are you doing? Can he see shit all? Aha! Um. Stanley, don't do that. I can't follow you there. I can't help you. How will you write a story without me? <laughs> you can't do it. You know that. Stanley, come back. Ha ha! That was a trick. Uh. So, am I just stuck here? Do I go anywhere in particular? Or do I just sort of doss about? This is terrifying. I know it's not meant to be a scary game, but I'm literally terrified because I don't know what's going to happen. I don't go there. I just feel like anything's going to jump out at any point, and it's horrible. What the? It's sad, I know. But all stories must come to an end. Where the hell did he come from? Of course, they say it's the journey that truly matters and not the destination. And I like that idea. God. To think we might value the paths we walk as much as the places they lead us. Now, I don't know what sort of story you've ciphered out of that world you've made for yourself. But I hope that being the leading man was everything it's cracked up to be. I know it can be a little hard getting around without someone looking over your shoulder. But this is simply the nature of freedom. Besides... I haven't really gone anywhere. Maybe you don't want a guide, but I think I'll always have a place here at the end of every story. I'll step in and wrap things up with a nice piece of dialogue and a reflection on life that makes sense of whatever path you've chosen to walk. Screw and you now, and your typical I'm happy to be voice. the destination instead of the journey. But only for now. I don't like that guy. Oh. Okay.
I'm going to leave that there. Um, I hope you enjoyed. I guess I'll see you in the next episode of this. Ding. 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 Okay. Um, yeah. Goodbye for now. <laughs>